You're listening to DraftKings Network. Billy is very busy chasing Stugatz around. It's a nightmare of a life. I have regrets about assigning to Billy the babysitting of Stugatz while Billy, I didn't know he was going to have a second child, while Billy already has the responsibilities of chasing around a lot of irresponsible little people. But while it's delayed, the useless sound montage has indeed gotten here. Before we get to that, though, I simply want to show you video, all of you video, of what is happening in Colorado, where last night at 10 p.m., students started lining up for the extra student tickets that might be available because the 12,000 student tickets are already gone. So at 6 o'clock this morning... Outside of the stadium, where all of college football's media is descending this weekend, this was the student line for tickets at a nowhere program that was one of the worst I've ever seen last year. Prime time. This is snaking up some stairs around the stadium. I'm going to say it's thousands of people because it's not hundreds of people in this line. It's a line I would never stand in for anything. You could tell me there is freedom. Uh. Freedom <laughs> is at the end of a freedom line. Fries? I'm going to simp. Well, fries I might. Yeah. Freedom fries I might stand in a line like that. How many people? This, Lucy, this line is pretty long. Yeah. Lucy, how many people would you say that this line? This line might be There's more. At least like forty-two. Two million. Wasn't asking either one of you. Was directly asking the question of Lucy. Didn't want to hear from either one of you. Heard plenty from Mike today. I did get distracted by that, so I lost count in the okay. middle, so I don't yeah. really know. Oh, Let's go to over. Say two million. Say two million. Two million. Again. 42. 17. <laughs> 38. This is not that impressive, Dan. This happens everywhere. Not oh here, my but every, God. everywhere else. This is impressive. It's happening at Colorado. Salute yeah. to Boulder. There's more people in line for the extra tickets than there were at the Miami of Texas A&M game. I Ooh, free tickets. Buy one, get one free. Yeah, but we're... <laughs> There were 60,000 people at that game. <laughs> which is, that is rich. There, right, that's okay. It's a very big stadium. <laughs> How are we feeling about the useless sound montage, Billy? It's here, Dan. We're back. Football is back, and so are coaches and players saying absolutely nothing at all. Any new stars? Any old stars? Any familiar faces? Who is starring in the useless sound montage this week? Well, you know, we get a little bit from everyone here. We don't want to, you know, it's week one, Dan, so we don't want to say who's going to be a star for sure, who isn't, but we have our friends that are part of it every single year. We're never going to forget Mike Tomlin's there. Dan Campbell, of course, is there. Lafleur is back. Just, you know, a little bit of spices of everyone in here. You guys saw on Dan Campbell, correct? Uh, it was pointed out again, because Dan Campbell won a game, how absurd his coffee order is at Starbucks. It is two ventis with two espresso shots. It's the equivalent of 10 Red Bulls, what Man Campbell is having every morning, which cannot be healthy. I did that once. I tried it just to see what it was like, and I really thought I was going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I was in the bathroom, and I was cramping so bad, and I was like, oh, my God. It was, like, COVID time, too, so I was like, I can't go to the hospital. I can't go to the hospital yeah. with all these COVID people there because I'm going to show up and be like, I wanted to make a silly little TikTok trying a coffee diet. It was the most miserable day of my life. Yeah. People. What happened? I, I don't want to say what happens. I'm a lady, but it was not <laughs> nice. It was the worst. By, like, hour two, I was shaking, like... It was the most, like, I genuinely was cramping so bad that I was literally like, do I have to go to the hospital? Because I, but yeah. I couldn't. My pride was, I was like, I'd rather die here than go to the hospital. Did you and die? Say, I didn't die because I was like, I can't, like, walk in there and there are actually sick people and be like, I just drank too much coffee because I thought it'd be a funny bit. It was a funny bit. It was right then and there that I knew that we had to hire Lucy. Honestly, <laughs> we had to hire the, the, yeah. a, a cramping, constipated Lucy because she tried. That was not the issue. That not constipated. <laughs> she shits Quite too. The opposite, She'd fit right in. She'd shit right in. Let's do the useless sound <laughs> montage. Tub. Shame. It's 
coming in here and, and starting the season off the right way, and uh, I think we did that in all phases. Um, all three phases. And uh, it's why we play with uh, three phases. I'm wanting to do some th- certain things in all three phases. Offense, defense, coaching, special teams, whatever, you name it. When you get 40 to nothing, there's a... There's a lot of blame to go around, and I'll take the I'll take the head of it. In those circumstances where you can't create splash, I think kind of the moral of the story is that we shot ourselves in the foot so many times. You know, we had some things certainly that you know we got to clean up and we want to fix and make better. It's far from perfect, and there's a lot of cleaning up. We got to get that cleaned up because that's that's something you can improve on your you know by being disciplined and, and not having those penalties. You know, Fan- let the fantasy guys worry about that. Hats off to the Rams; they wanted it more. We just didn't execute when it comes down to it. And, uh, you know, I'll be the first to say that, you know, as always, you can put that put that on me. You know, we didn't didn't score enough to win, and, again, that falls on me. That falls on, on my shoulders. So. And we just fell behind because of me, and uh, I put it on myself. So on offense, we got finished drives. We got to score touchdowns, and that starts with me, so. You know, it falls on me, the one drive with the penalties. You know, we wanted to be violent, aggressive, but we got to get that cleaned up because we sh- kind of shot ourselves in the foot, that one drive, but and that falls on me, so we got to play smarter. I didn't do a good enough job. You know, today getting us, you know, adjusted throughout the game. It's never going to be about one guy. We're going to block better. We got to get into routes better. We got to get open quicker, and we have to throw the ball uh, better. And the runners have to run better. It's over now. You know, would have, could have, should have. We won, and winning is the only thing that matters. But we got the dub. Just move forward and, and just focus and practice a little hard on the things we messed up on. We got kicked in the teeth today in a lot of ways. You know, go back to work here. Um, try to correct some of the things that we, we obviously need to do better. Just everything that, that you want your quarterback to represent, this guy's checking all the boxes. and You know, they've been working hard, they've been practicing hard, they've been getting better, and for us to, to make those kind of mistakes, that was disappointing. And, and, and I know we are all disappointed, but we're all thrilled. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I got to look at the tape. Got to go back and look at the tape. And again, we're going to watch the rest of the tape, and we're going to take a look at some things, and uh, you know, we'll we'll evaluate it off of the tape and get a chance to talk with him. I mean, we got to go back and look at the tape. We got to go back and look at the tape and uh, look and see where we're at with those guys. Absolutely, but I need to watch the tape too. We'll have a chance to see the tape. I thought offense was absolutely uh, speaking the right language at halftime. When it's raining like that, it's something that you got to handle. Uh, we didn't handle it today. You know, sometimes it's it's the inches like that that set you back from gaining some true momentum in the first half, and that's what this game was about. He's a football player. It, it was erroneous, I thought. Um, <clears throat> that's what we do in player meetings when there's a ring. Uh, no? I didn't say it was you. I think the biggest thing is just collective effort uh, as a whole team. Just, um, you know, I think it takes, you know, all of us, and we, you know, we definitely – we're excited about you know who we are and where we're going to be you know and I think the biggest thing is is continuing to push. So I just kind of try to have a one play mentality. Uh, just try to go one and zero each and every play. Um. <sighs> and those guys played gutsy. We got off the field in the second half. They made some gutsy stops and I thought they pulled through. Baker's gutsy. He's tough. He made some gutsy runs at the end. Getting us in the right plays, Baker, in the second half, adjusting to what they were doing was huge for him as well. He he played a gutsy, tough, mentally tough ball game. It's a great win today. We got to move on tomorrow. It's just good to know you won't go 0-17. It's frustrating because I called the ass elves, and we just lost to some elves, so I'm pissed on my part. I'm not I'm pissed on Allen that end. All right. That was fun. Who the hell was that at the end? What kind of voice? Dan Campbell. <laughs> he was eating knees. That's so. that's what Lucy sounded like in the bathroom. <laughs> it was not fun. <laughs> what week one do you guys feel in professional football was undercovered? Because I have a couple of nominees. The quarterback position has changed so much in efficiency that when I see the stat that Tannehill is 13 for 30 for three intercept with three interceptions, the 13 for 30 catches my eye just as much as the three interceptions because quarterbacks don't play that way. But to me, the one that was most undercovered in week one was that Deshaun Watson easily won a game, even though it appears that Deshaun Watson kind of stinks now. Because Joe Burrow, after getting the richest contract in the history of sports, in the history of his sport, contract from a cheap franchise, this number was stunning to me. They guaranteed him $219 million, the previous high of guarantee from a notoriously cheap franchise with the Bengals, 
was $31 million that he threw for 82 yards and six first downs. To me, that was washed away by football is so giant that there are certain games that just don't get talked about the next day because we grab the best five or six and Dallas is always in the mix and we're talking about the big teams and sometimes some things blow away in the dust and that game feels like it was swallowed by the rest of the coverage when I'm like man that's confusing that I don't think even though Mike Ryan had because the Bengals are never any good against the Browns And because the pass rush is so good for the Browns that Miles Garrett is just fooling around as the middle linebacker before he just runs right past the center, I don't think anybody would have had the under 83 yards on Joe Burrow as a I mean, under 100 yards from one of the best quarterbacks in the league is not something that anyone would expect. I did think that their offense would struggle just because Joe Burrow's barely got any practice and because of the injury and because he was going up against a good defense on the road, although it didn't matter where the game would, would be played. The Browns always struggle week one, and now they've won two out of their last three week one games. But I, I think uh, – it's a credit to Joe Burrow's last five years that no one's going to be talking about that. Now, if he does it in week two, people will, will chat, but other people struggled mightily. The play that jumped out from that game that everyone is fascinated about is Miles Garrett, middle linebacker, comes up to the line pantomiming that he's dribbling a basketball between his legs. It has to be terrifying for Burrow because then he easily just run past, runs past their center who cannot deal with his weight leverage But the most impressive play to me in that game from Miles Garrett was the one that finished Joe Burrow's afternoon. It was a double team on the corner that he just split right through with a a back chipping, making it no problem. And as Joe Burrow tried to roll out around him, he just grabbed Joe Burrow with an arm because that guy is stronger than everybody Jim else. Schwartz is a new Browns defensive coordinator. He's a very good defensive coordinator, has been his entire time in the NFL. And if he's going to line up Miles Garrett right on top of the ball as a middle linebacker that's blitzing and crossing over while he's doing it, I have a bold prediction. Miles Garrett is going to intercept a snap this year. 